a select group of VIPs were able to watch Miami's top secret scrimmage over the weekend. One of those VIPs is about to join us, so let's get that intel. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, if there is such a thing. I am Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and also host of Locked on ACC. Thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We are free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockedoncollege. Terms and conditions apply. On this episode, we're not only going to talk about that closed scrimmage over the weekend, the good and the bad that came out of it. Uh, We are going to talk about the Rivals Combine Series, which was also in Miami over the weekend because our guest today... You know him, you love him, and he was taking in both of those events. He was one of those VIPs, Larry Bluestein, South Florida high school sports expert, 560 WQAM, joins us. Blue, how are you? Good. I don't I don't know if I'm a, a VIP, but uh, had an opportunity to to go down there, and uh, it was a busy weekend, and and I kind of like geared up for the weekend because you knew that you know on on Saturday you would get a chance to see uh, you know how the University of Miami is progressing with one more week left uh, before the spring game, and then uh, some of the guys who you know. There was only one rivals camp this year. They usually have one up in Orlando area, but they only had one. So that meant you got all the guys that uh, came down, you know, probably uh, from Gainesville all the way down uh, and even Jacksonville. But because there's a Georgia one, so a lot of those kids that live in the Panhandle, Tallahassee, Jacksonville usually go to that one. But, uh, yeah, (coughs) there was 400, over 400 uh, kids. It was, it's, uh, oh it's one of those things where you go and we'll talk more about it, but where you go. And then the next day you look on social media and you see all these pictures and you go, gosh, I don't even remember seeing that guy. Wow. <laughs> then, you know, there's a lot of kids. Well, hopefully it was easier to sort everything out at the Miami scrimmage on Saturday morning. And okay. So before we talk about some specific position groups, cause I know everybody wants your take on the quarterbacks, for example, Give me your overall standouts, Blue, regardless of position. Who were the players at Miami scrimmage on Saturday that really popped the most? Uh, without a doubt, Elijah Lofton. I think he's got an opportunity to be one of the best freshmen in the country. Um, he is versatile. He's uh, like I, I uh, was telling a couple of people, he's a Lamborghini, and you're not going to put a Lamborghini in the garage. So I think from day one, from the game from the game up in University of Florida, he's going he's gonna to play a role because he can do – and, and you and I talked about this last year when I told you that I watched his state championship game against Liberty and he threw one, he caught one, he ran one and he picked off a ball for a touchdown. So yeah, yeah, you figure you get a guy like that and then you see him and I, I've seen him, but I've never seen him really up close and personal. He's a big kid. He and not only is he a big kid, but he's fast. And he would they were putting him at running back. And just in case, you know, they may need him, you know, early in the season. If Mark Fletcher, I know that Mark Fletcher's coming back, and but it's been a slow process for him. But they know now that they have a durable guy who can pull away from you. I mean, I think that's the thing that everybody there was really surprised about Elijah. They go, oh, yeah, you know, he's this he's fast and he's powerful and there's just no way you can't, can't not use him in your, in your mix. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to start, but he's a guy that you could put at H back. You could pull it, put a tight end uh, and you could obviously have a running back He's a great running back. Uh, so he impressed me without a doubt the most because, you know, I mean, he never took plays off, you know, right. usually they'll put your uh, true freshman in there uh, and then they'll yank them. You know, they say, okay, well he got his, no, they kept him in the whole scrimmage and everybody was just, I mean, their jaws were dropping just because they didn't, they kept saying, who's number nine, who's number nine. And, 
he did a great job. Zaquan Patterson, you know, I mean, he these guys all look like they've been here for a long time. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like Zaquan Patterson's an 18-year-old kid and Lofton 17. So, you, I mean, you take a look at these kids and they're supposed to still be in high school, you know, and they're here at college level and nobody, they're not missing a beat. And, and that's why it's really neat to see that. And, um, you know, from a lot of young kids, then, then you kind of focus in on the established guys who's going to be, you know, the, the centerpiece and the offensive line, I think is, is probably as good as it's ever been, at least in the last 15 years. I mean, because you have people, not only the talent, but the coaching. The coaching superior with Mario and 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 uh, Mirabal, Mirabal. Yeah. and uh, and the kids buy into it, and you could see the size. They worked hard in the weight room. I mean, it's just like you're walking into a, a major college now. You know, instead of you and I looking a couple of years ago and saying, "Wow, this is terrible," and uh, now it's not. <laughs> and I think that's what's good. Miami's going to score points. There's no doubt about it. They still got. In the portal, I still think that they're going to go after a marquee receiver. They don't have a guy that comes into the into the huddle and says, hey, I could beat this guy. I could beat this guy. You know, like a Rambo did or, you know, the guys like that. They don't have it. I mean, yeah, they have Restrepo, but Restrepo's limited in what he could do. He's not going to stretch the field for 90 yards. He's just not right. fast enough, and he's not that type of guy. But for what he does, he's going to – he's sensational, obviously. He's a leader, kid's – People gravitate towards them. I just don't think – I don't know that Jacoby George is not doing what a lot of people wanted him to do, Alex. Uh, he's hmm. just not – he's not taking – control of that position i think isaiah horton may be a guy who will emerge and you watch him the other day and he's he knows where he's at he doesn't look lost but they don't have that guy i don't think right now hmm. uh you know that could change but i i think because of the fact that they're gonna have to empty out a lot of these kids on next sunday because the portal opens up a, a week from today on a Monday, and, uh, and obviously, you know that uh, you know in in Mario's office or the war room or wherever they have a list of the guys that they're going to go after, and I think they go after another offensive lineman. I think they go after a wide receiver. I think they're going to go after a defensive tackle. Uh, they're going to go after maybe a linebacker help. Uh, although I thought Wesley Besaint, who's put on twenty pounds. I mean, yes. he's, I mean, at, at first I didn't even recognize him, but uh, he's put on great weight. So what, what is he? He's got to be around like 225, 230 now. Yeah, you think? close. Yeah. Yeah. But he looks real good. I mean, and obviously, you know, when you have Francisco is going to be the centerpiece because he's a guy with experience, you know, so um, you never know what's going to happen, but I know that they've got to add some more pieces. The secondary right now, I think is a, is a potential problem. Uh, they don't have, a bunch of depth. So if, if any of these kids get hurt, you know, hurt, uh, they're going to be in trouble. So mm. that that's another thing they're going to have to go into the portal, see if there's some really good corners. I think safety, they'll be okay. Uh, you know, you, you got kids who've been there for a while and, and, and are ready to accept that role. I think Zaquan Patterson gets in that mix. You know, again, you, you know, all these people are hesitant, but you can't be hesitant. He's wearing a uniform. He's, you know, he's there. Why not use him? I mean, right. uh, you know, he he understands. He's physical. There's going to be a lot of things that he's going to, you know, be deficient in because he's just not experienced. But from pure athletic ability, guys like him and, you know, Lofton, you know, as true freshmen, uh, they bring more to the table than most. And uh, but um yeah, I, I just I was quarterback wise <laughs> as good as you well, well, hold, I mean, hold that thought because yeah, I want to get into that because I, I want to get into your takeaways on that room from from Cam Ward down to Judd Anderson and yeah. I also I also want to pick Blue's brain a little bit on the offensive line because you know he did mention maybe that's a spot they look to bring in a guy in yeah. the portal but I'm wondering about. One of the guys who's already on that line, if Samson Okunlola is ready to take a big step forward. Right. So we have a lot to cover. Remember, we're also going to cover the Rivals Combine Series, which is in Miami over the weekend as well. The great Larry Bluestein is with us. You know what you want to do? You want to keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. And for the small business owners, I know you're keeping it locked to LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. 
That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. And folks, there are 2.5 million small businesses using LinkedIn for hiring. Become one of them. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you so much for making this Monday episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. For the everydayers, we're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We have Larry Bluestein with us who does an awesome job covering football in South Florida and really all around the Southeast. This guy travels everywhere. 560 WQAM radio in Miami. All right, so Blue... Um, was, was this, uh, was this past Saturday, was that your first time watching Cam Ward in person at Miami? Uh, what, what were your takeaways from watching Miami's transfer who wears that number one Jersey? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the first time. That's why I wanted to go. I was going to go a couple of weeks ago and I had something come up and, uh, but, uh, yeah, definitely wanted to have an opportunity to see what he was all about. And wow. I mean, he is. I mean, you know, but the whole thing is, is the real comfortable situation is uh, the kid Reese Paffenberger. He's got a great arm. Uh, your guy, Judd Anderson, who I I mean, I've watched a lot of times on film, got a chance to watch him, uh, you know, uh, up close and personal. And he's going to be very impressive. I think he's an intelligent kid. He's learning stuff. You can't teach six, six and a half. So that's that's a, a pretty decent deal. And then uh, Emery Williams, who is still pretty darn good. Uh, but their quarterback room is just elevated uh, a billion fold over last year. Uh, they've got kids who are going to push one another. And that's the one thing, you know, I don't think anybody was really pushing Tyler Van Dyke last year. And, you know, obviously the urgency wasn't there for him to, you know, just, you know, completely take overs, but Ward will, because if Ward falters in any way, you got to, uh, you got at least one other guy with experience. And then, uh, you know, and then Emery who showed, you know, listen, he showed a lot of guts going into Tallahassee last year and doing what he did. You know, they could pick on him all he wants and say what he isn't, but uh, he was a true freshman. And, uh, you know, that's that's one of those things. But, yeah, quarterback room, sound, very sound. Yeah, and we, when, uh, last time we spoke to Cristobal um, was last Thursday, and, and he he seemed to indicate that obviously we, we all know Ward is the top performer and the starter. Cristobal right. seemed to indicate that, it's pretty close between Poffenbarger and Emery Williams, and those are really the guys that are pushing Ward. And, and he seemed to put uh, to put Jakari Brown right behind them, and, and Judd Anderson right behind that. Do you see the pecking order the same way that it seems to be Emery Williams and Reese Poffenbarger are the guys who are, let's say, closest to Cam Ward right now? Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and for obvious reasons, because, uh, uh, you know, you, you look in the situation with, uh, with Poffenbarger is he's had some experience. He's had a lot of experience. Two years, and then yeah. I just think for the reasons, <coughs> excuse me, the reasons that I just said about Emery, uh, he's a dude, you know, he's got a great arm. He's smart. He reads defenses real well. The only thing that kind of separates him for that, you know, from being at that next level is this experience. But, uh, yeah, they've got a really good room. I think that, uh, you know, that uh, Dawson has things under control. They all relate to him. And, uh, and, and that's the one thing that's uh, kind of been a missing ingredient, the relationship between the quarterback and the offensive coordinator. Uh, so I want to talk some offensive line blue because uh, a guy that uh, every practice I've been out there, I've been trying to get a, a look at Samson Okunlola, the pancake honcho, uh, who's yeah. fully, fully recovered and healthy from the injury that he suffered last year. He's been looking good in practice. Uh, at times, he's been getting reps at starting left guard. But at other times, and I think this has been, you know, maybe trending a little bit more recently in practice, he's been getting some starting right tackle reps. Now, the thing with right tackle is, uh, the guy who was the full-time starter at that position last year, 
Francis Maui Noah, he's he's going to be back, but he's not practicing in spring right now because he had his shoulder cleaned up. Uh, and so this was actually this got me thinking. I was reading something that uh, David Lake wrote in Inside the U this morning. Uh, do you think there could be a possibility, Blue, where Samson Okunlola could end up being the starting right tackle and CC Maui Noah maybe moves to left guard? Would would that be kind of an interesting? way to get all five of, of your best guys on the field or do you not want to tinker with Maui Noah at right tackle because he yeah. started 12 games there last year yeah I don't think that they're gonna take a shot at moving him around yeah. he's already kind of established himself where he was last year uh you know take, take some of the other pieces of the puzzle and move them around but you gotta you know between him and Rivers and guys like that they're pretty established at where they're at yeah. So, you know, that's what makes up the strength, you know, especially, you know, on that side. I mean, you, you know, you take a look and, and, and you know, the kid Cooper oh, who did good. a tremendous yeah. job. And then the thing is, is with the depth now, I mean, I, I just think center kind of is up in the air. We don't know, you know, I mean, Carpenter's going to be OK, but I, I mean, we're looking at Matt Lee. <laughs> from last year who came in here and was a captain in his first week. Um, so, I mean, other than that, you know, I mean, they, and I agree with you about Samson. Samson's a big, strong kid. Uh, he technically he's still learning. He's got a lot to learn, but he's learning it. You still have Kensler and you have, you know, guys like that. I mean, uh, Lou Cristobal is a good fill in type of player. Remember he played in the, uh, in the, uh, bowl game. <clears throat> so obviously you got his, uh, uh, feet wet. But then again, you look at some of the other guys. Is Jonathan Dennis ready? Is Jonathan yeah. Dennis going to be on the roster? I mean, that's a kid that they really banked on, you know, when he came from Oregon out of South Dade. And, uh, but, um, yeah, there's so much talent. The Matthew McCoy kid, I got a chance to watch a lot of those guys the other day. Ryan Rodriguez, who's put on some really good pounds. He's a stronger kid. Uh, from a depth standpoint, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to tinker around with moving anybody. I just yeah. think that they're going to plug people in. Right. Well, do you think uh, Okunlola, could he be the guy that plugs yeah, in yeah, to yeah, left yeah. guard? Because I, yeah. I, I don't mind. I, I know that he came out of high school as a tackle, but – Mirabal loves to matter. cross train these guys and teach. I don't think it matters. Yeah. No, it doesn't matter. He's uh yeah, like I said, he's agile and he's a mobile type of kid. He moves real well and 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 he's a big strong kid. And as you mentioned, he's like the the pancake guy. You know, I mean he's he's that strong. Now, obviously it's gonna take him time to do it at this level, you know, especially playing against the talent that Miami is gonna line up against. But uh yeah, I think it, they're kind of set at that offensive line, but I do think they're gonna go after a marquee kid or two. I really do. I, I mean, because you never could have enough of that position. You know, it's just like people talk about running back. Yeah, you know what? Your marquee guy from last year, Mark Fletcher, is not healthy yet. And so that means that you're already dipping into guys that you probably didn't expect to be, you know, in that role. So I think they go after another receiver. I think they go after another defensive tackle as well. Linebacker helps always important. And then the secondary. So uh, uh, special teams wise, they're fine. I think that they got to, they're going to get Bobby Washington more involved in the yeah. offense this year as well, because I mean, again, and, and, and I hate to relate the same thing, but those Mercedes and Lamborghinis, you just, you can't keep them in the garage. I mean, those guys are kids that can help and you recruited them for a reason. And I think with Ray Ray and, you know, and uh, Robbie Washington, uh, you've got two kids right there that could ignite you at any time. Chris Johnson uh, got some look fairly good the other day, still has to learn, you know, with his, I mean, he's got running back speed, but does he have running back uh, skills. And that's mm. the one thing that he's developing now. Uh, he's working really, really hard uh, with the running backs coach. And he's done a tremendous job with a lot of them. I watched the coaching. That's the one thing that people are still kind of skeptical about. Is this a coaching staff that can help elevate? We know that you've got two good coordinators, but what about the guys under him? I think that the Nichols Nicholson is a tremendous coach. He, you can see how he works really well, well with the linebackers. So the pieces are there. There. everybody's going to always have an opinion, Alex, and everybody's always going to poke holes in everything. And if you're a fan, I can't blame you because look at what you've been over the last uh, two decades. There's, you know, there's been a lot of skeptical people for a reason.
reason. You just, uh, but listen, if you're a fan, you got a right to be. And and I looked at it the other day as a fan and, and watching and I go, you know what? There's a lot to be, a lot to be excited about because you know, the roster is ever changing. And I, and I went back two years ago and I think I told you this and I looked at the roster and then compared it to what's today. And I was telling Don Bailey Jr. The other day, I says, this is crazy. I mean, but it, here's the thing. You're going to look back in, in 25 at what's here in 23, right. you know, the what same was it? Thing, yeah. <laughs> and you'll be Marvel because, you know, that's where I think the 25 season is where Miami gets to that level that if they did get into the playoffs and, and advanced, you wouldn't be surprised. Wow. Well, this is a great breakdown from Larry Bluestein. I want to break down some stars of the future uh, because Blue, he was at the Rivals Combine Series in Miami. Talk about some important recruiting targets for the Hurricanes in the class of 2025 and some Miami Hurricanes verbal commits who are out there hopefully looking good. We'll get the breakdown from our boy Blue, Larry Bluestein. Keep it locked right here on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? You have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked on Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports today brings can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Larry Bluestein is with us. Our boy Blue from 560 WQAM, the Sixth Ring Kane Show on Five Reasons Sports Network. Blue is all over the place, and he was at Rivals Combine Series uh, this past uh, weekend down in Miami. So, Blue, <laughs> and I, I do want to get some of your other top performers, but a, a player that uh, I feel like Mario Cristobal and Alex Mirabal are very interested in is four-star interior offensive lineman Max Buchanan. He came down from Sanford, Florida, from Seminole High School, six foot four, 275 pounds. Anything you could tell us about where Miami might be trending with him and how did he look out there at Rivals? Look really good, you know, and, and, and the thing is I had a chance, you know, I've known Max uh, since he was in the ninth grade because a lot of camps that I saw him and I've been really close to his dad, who's a coach uh, on the staff over at Sanford Seminole. We talked and the, the one thing about this guy is he, he's just so technically sound. You're not going to beat him because of the fact that he's going to have the upper hand on you almost every single play. And he did yesterday against some really, really good defensive linemen uh, that he went against. I mean, he uh, the, the kid Bucard from Miami Central who transferred in uh, from Mobile, Alabama, who had an outstanding Under Armour event. And uh, Max kind of neutralized him in their couple of, uh, you know, uh, face-offs yesterday. He's a different level. Uh, he's a guy that's going to be a major kid, stays healthy. He's going to you know, be that type of guy that's going to continue to progress and go get into the NFL. I think Clemson right now is Miami, Florida State, Ole Miss, uh, Penn State, just talking to some people. Um, but I, he likes Miami. And the whole thing is, is when I talked to his dad, the one thing that he said is he says his relationship with Mirabal and and and, and um, uh, Mario uh, is a special bond. And, uh, the, and so when I heard that, I said, well, you know what? I says, he doesn't have to worry because neither of those guys are going anywhere. I mean, you know, I mean, so if he, he does make a commitment based on that, uh, you know, I think him and, um, uh, there was a couple of, uh, um, uh, kids the same way that, that had that bond, you know, with a couple of coaches and, uh, they go, well, if they leave, you know, they were, I says, yeah, but it doesn't matter because think about this. Okay. Here's a perfect example. Uh, yesterday, one of the, uh, one of the top quarterbacks who happens to be a teammate now, um, uh, of Max Buchanan, uh, Michael Clayton, who's a 2026 quarterback out of the same school. I, you know, and I've gotten a pretty good relationship with his dad over the, the years. And he said to me, he says, you know what? He loves Dawson. And uh, but you figure Dawson may be a head coach somewhere soon. I said, yeah, but here's the thing. And it's it's when you step back and think about it, if my if he does do that, 
Mario's going to replace him with somebody like-minded. I mean, obviously, he's not going to be some guy who's a first-year coach. He's going to get a guy who runs that type of offense, a guy who's going to be dynamic, knows his stuff. And that's why I try to explain to him. I said, you can't – you know, it's good to have relationships with coaches, uh, but you got to also understand that these coaches – you know, we're good. They're going to move on. And right. Uh, and it's going to happen everywhere. Not just no, Miami. <laughs> no question. No question. And, uh, but yeah, there, I mean, you know, you talk about, uh, him, he, yeah, he was sensational and, uh, he deserved the MVP and so did Clayton and, yeah. you know, the, the kid from, um, Miami central, the uh, Beckham Chris, a kid, uh, who came in, he's committed to Penn state. He was here last year, but then left and went back to Colorado and, and then the Brady Hart kid from Coco looked real good. The Darian Coleman from Orlando Jones. So a lot Brown was at this. It was at this yeah, 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 yeah. Well. He's but he's a no brainer. Yeah, well, I, I, know, I know, and I know also he's been he's been trending to Ohio State. Uh, you know, yeah. here, here, Miami still he he says Miami's still in it, but the crystal balls have been flying to Ohio State for him. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, it is. You know, you try to get who you could get, and I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, it's just there's so much talent. You know, and in Miami, obviously, uh, you know, a, a lot of the kids and here was a good thing having the rivals camp down here because you had a lot of kids go to the Miami spring. I mean, the practice, uh, you know, right. you, you, yeah. I mean, that was great. I mean, you, Buchanan was there. You had, saw a bunch of these other kids, you know, they had an opportunity to come down and, and, and they were on hand. So, I mean, uh, the, the kid Drake. Uh, uh, Stubbs, Stubbs, who I think is a beast, yeah. and he was there. He was at the Miami uh, and looking good too. Even well, what, what's the, his deal? Because isn't he like uh, he's he's committed to USC, USC, but it, but it's like it seems completely still wide open with him. Blue, like I, I don't know if maybe he's debating whether he actually wants to go across country or not, but he still still seems very open with him. Well, yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, and and, and I had a, he's another guy that I got kind of close to and, you know, talking to him and his parents. And uh, hey, listen, they all had great times the other day at, yeah. the, at the University of Miami. I mean, because you know how that is. I mean, you roll out the red carpet, guys like him and Vernell and, you know, guys that come down and, you know, Wade and Charles and, 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 and people like that. Uh, when they get an opportunity to, to show things off, they do, you know, and, and, uh, um, but they all had a great time, and that was a you know Gavin Nix was there. He he also he couldn't he couldn't participate. He's been he had surgery, uh, but uh, they had a lot of kids that came to the camp. You know, uh, I mean to the practice, and then they came out yesterday and performed. And I thought that was huge for Miami too, because even though they've gotten a lot of guys over the last you know. Uh, to come down. This was a perfect weekend because they scrimmaged. Uh, these guys got a chance to see Isaiah Lofton and Jake and Zaquan because that, whether you think so or not, that means so much because these kids were, were playing against them last year. And here they are, you know, lining up for a, a pretty decent football team and, and, and getting a, you know, so that really, you know, when you look, you know, like a Max Buchanan and seeing, Hey, listen, you know, center is kind of a transient position on this team. If yeah. I come in here, I could, you know, solidify it for four years. So, you know, I mean, or three years. So All that's said. the that's the best thing about this, too, you know, because Miami's on the rise. But at the same time, there's a, a few holes that can be filled by a lot of these other kids that, you, you know, that if they go to Ohio State or they go to Georgia or, you know, some of those other powers, they may have to sit you know, on the bench for a year or so. And uh, in Miami, they're going to get an opportunity to show what they can do. And if they do it, they're going to be inserted. If not, they'll have to, you know, continue the process. I wanted to ask you about one more player. You know, we don't always look on this show as far ahead as to class of 2026, but a Miami verbal commit in 2026, Jordan Campbell, um, Blue, I, I kept hearing about him being an excellent performer at Rivals over the weekend. And just right. the, the, this description is going to remind people uh, a little bit of what Elijah Lofton's doing right now. Because I heard Campbell was taking reps at running back, tight end, receiver, and defensive reps as well at Rivals. How did he look? Yeah, it looked real good. I mean, young kid, obviously, you know, so, I mean, he's got a couple years. But, uh, yeah, he's the guy that jumped in, you know, he – probably the two underclassmen that 
probably jumped off the screen were him and Neiman Lawrence, a quarterback from Ransom Everglades, who is a, a plus plus baseball center fielder too. So, I mean, uh, and a smart kid and, and former hurricane Brandon Washington, uh, whose son also goes to Ransom Everglades. And I mean, you know, like I said, if people go, Oh, well, why are they there? Listen, First of all, the school is prestigious as heck. You know that. Yeah. I mean, it's in Coconut Grove. Oh, yeah. And if he's still getting look, if he's winning MVPs at rivals camps over all these four and five star type of kids, I don't think he's at the wrong place. No. Wow. Well, great, great stuff is always here from Larry Bluestein. And his show on 560 WQAM is the tonight, most informative radio one. show in the country. And yeah, so is it tonight, let, let yeah, people know yeah, what, yeah. what they can expect Monday night. Yeah, Coach McIntyre uh, from FIU is going to come on and preview his uh, uh, spring game. We'll talk NCAA basketball, the championship game tonight. We have a couple of area coaches that are going to come on and, and uh, give their opinion. Your buddy, John Garcia, who does a tremendous job. I uh, saw John yesterday. He was working his butt off. Uh, John's going to come on and talk a little bit about um, – uh, yesterday's camp and some of the guys that he thought uh, looked pretty special. So, uh, and uh, Ennio Yapur, who is a quarterback out of Miami, New Orleans, a kid who will be a five year starter at the varsity level this year, uh, showed out real good, was in the top five or six quarterbacks at the end. Uh, he's going to come on and, um, uh, so it's a good show. We're we're excited about it, uh, you know, because we kind of mix things up. I'm glad to talk basketball as well. Yeah, I love it. Larry Bluestein does a fantastic job. And make sure you follow him on X at Larry Bluestein. Follow us at Locked on Canes. If you follow us, we will follow you back. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that like button, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you listen to the audio version, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your pods, there's like 100 podcast apps. We're on all of them. And we will talk to you guys again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.